हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेल दिस इज आर लेक्चर एटीन पार्ट टू फॉर सर्किट ब्रेकर इन लास्ट लेक्चर वी हैव डिस्कस द बेसिक्स ऑफ सर्किट ब्रेकर अलॉन्ग विद डैट वी हैव डिस्कस द ऑयल सर्किट ब्रेकर विद इट्स कंप्लीट डिटेल्स वेल इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल डिस्कस द एयर सर्किट ब्रेकर्स एस एफ सिक्स सल्फर हेक्सा फ्लोराइड सर्किट ब्रेकर एंड वैक्यूम सर्किट ब्रेकर बिकॉज वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस द ऑयल सर्किट ब्रेकर इन आर प्रीवियस लेक्चर वेल फर्स्ट वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट एयर ब्लास्ट सर्किट ब्रेकर लाइक इन आर प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी हैव डिस्कस दैट वाई दीज नेम्स लाइक एयर ऑयल एस एफ सिक्स वैक्यूम इज कॉल्ड अपॉन दिस इज ड्यू टू द आर्च आर्क क्विंचिंग मकैनिज्म सो इन एयर प्लास सर्किट ब्रेकर फॉर आर्क एक्सटिंगशिंग एयर इज यूज दीज ब्रेकर एम्प्लॉयज हाई प्रेशर एयर प्लास्ट एज एन आर्क क्विंचिंग मीडियम Uh, the contacts are opened in a flow of uh, air blast established by the opening of blast valve the air blast cools the arc and sweeps away the arcing product to the atmosphere well uh, this rapidly uh, increase the dielectric strength of the medium uh, between the contacts and uh, prevents from are uh, reestablishing the arc consequently the arc is extinguished and the uh, flow of current is interrupted in air blast circuit breakers uh, a air compressor is used uh, which is uh, used basically to uh, provide a blast of air of high pressure uh, that extinguish the arc the types of air circuit breaker uh, air breaker uh, air circuit breaker has uh, uh, three major types but we will discuss the main two types uh, the first one is uh, axial blast air circuit breaker uh, the second one is uh, cross blast circuit breaker and uh, the third one we have the radial blast type so we will discuss the uh, air blast axial blast uh, circuit breaker in next slide uh, first we will discuss the axial blast uh, air circuit breaker as you can see from the figure uh, which shows the essential components of a typical Uh, axial blast air circuit breaker as you can see uh, there are air reservoir on the left most bottom uh, the air valve which controls the air pressure the arcing chamber uh, the piston along with that the closing spring and the series isolator Uh, the fixed and uh, moving contacts are held in close position by a spring pressure under normal condition uh this valves remain closed under uh, normal condition but opens up automatically uh, by tripping the impulse when a fault occurs on the system so this is the basic uh, construction uh, of the axial Uh, blast air circuit breaker uh, remember uh, the air reservoir it is basically a compressor uh, you cannot use a simple air source because uh, if the pressure is not there uh, the work is not performed perfectly so because our motive is to uh, extinguish the arc uh, timely so uh, when a fault occurs uh, the tripping impulse cause 
opening of the air valve as uh, we discussed in the previous slide also and uh, you can also see in the figure which connects the circuit breaker reservoir to the arcing chamber which is uh, depicted on the uh, left hand side. Uh, well the high pressure air entering the arcing chamber uh, pushes away uh, the moving contact uh, against the spring pressure and the moving contact is separated and an arc is struck. Uh, at the same time uh, high pressure air blast flows along the arc and takes away the ionized gas along with it. Uh, consequently uh, the arc is extinguished and the current flow is interrupted. Uh, one of the most important things that uh, need to be noted uh, that the contact separation uh, required for the interruption is generally uh, small like 1.75, 1.5 or even 2 cm. So such a small gap uh, may constitute uh, inadequate clearance uh, for the normal service voltage. Uh, so we can say that uh, an isolating switch is uh, incorporated as a part of uh, this type of uh, circuit breaker uh, because uh, in the last uh, lecture we have discussed that making and breaking of the circuit is very important trait of uh, any uh, circuit breaker because uh, the quicker it responds and uh, uh, the faster the arc, uh, arc extinguishing uh, mechanism operates. Uh, the second type we have the cross blast uh, air breaker. Uh, its construction is basically uh, it has uh, as you can see the air flow in the bottom. Uh, once on the right hand side a uh, fixed contact uh, on the upper side there are arc splitters and uh, on the left hand side there are opening and moving contact. So uh, this moving contact adjusts automatically uh, according to the uh, programming and uh, when the air flows uh, it extinguishes the arc and the arc splitters uh, split the arc. So in this case uh, the arc get splitted and it uh, extinguished. Um, well, uh, uh, some of the uh, major aspect of this uh, uh, cross blast air, circ air circuit breaker is that it is uh, complex than uh, the axial blast circuit breaker uh, due to its arc splitter mechanism. Uh, same is the case uh, uh, when the moving contact uh, is withdrawn an arc is struck between the fixed and moving contacts. The high pressure uh, cross blast force the arc into a uh, consisting of arc splitter and baffles. Uh, uh, it, because it's working and its uh, operation is very simple like we uh, discussed earlier so the most important thing is that uh, the gap the final gap for interruption is great enough to give uh, normal insulation clear so that a series of uh, isolating switches not necessary uh, so uh, its operation is quite simple uh, so but it is complex as compared to the uh, axial blast air circuit breaker. Uh, now there are some advantages of uh, air circuit breakers. Uh, the first one is the arcing products are completely uh, removed by the blast whereas the oil deteriorates with successive operations. Uh, the expense of regular oil replacement is awarded. So basically it is the, the comparison uh, between the oil circuit breaker uh, likewise uh, in oil circuit breaker uh, we are using oil uh, 
which ultimately uh, have a cost uh, along with that uh, there is no clean operation uh, the second one is uh, the growth of uh, dielectric strength is so rapid that final contact gap needed for arc extension is very small uh, the arcing time is very uh, small due to the rapid uh, build up of dielectric strength between the contacts uh, well uh, the fourth one is due to lesser arc energy air blast circuit breakers are very suitable for condition where frequent operation is required well the lesser arc energy is due to the uh, air blast uh, because the air blast is so quick and fast so it uh, it can extinguish the arc very quickly uh, the energy supplied for arc extension is obtained from high pressure air and is uh, independent of the current to be interrupted. Uh, as I discussed earlier, the high pressure air, uh, it is not an ordinary air, a compressor is installed uh, which uh, uh, provides a blast of air uh, up to several psi's. So these are the basic uh, advantages of uh, air circuit breaker. Uh, now there is some disadvantages. Uh, the air has relatively inferior arc uh, extinguishing properties. Uh, the second one is the air blast circuit breakers are very sensitive to the variations in the rate of uh, rise of re-striking voltage uh, so this is the problem when a re-striking voltage uh, occurs uh, the air pressure buildup is not so quick that uh, it can strike again and uh, the third one is that uh, considerable maintenance is required for the compressor plant which supply the air blast uh, sometimes uh, the compressor uh, didn't perform well so as a result, uh, the proper pressure is not supplied to the uh, air circuit breaker uh, due to the uh, improper work of compressor plant. Along with that, uh, you require a constant source of uh, energy for compressor operation. Now we will discuss the sulfur hexafluoride, commonly known as SF6 circuit breakers. Uh, as the name suggests, the sulfur hexafluoride gas is used as the arc quenching medium. Uh, the SF6 has uh, an electronegative gas and has a strong tendency to absorb free electrons. Uh, so the contacts of the breaker are open in high pressure flow of I uh, of uh, SF6 gas and uh, an arc is struck between them. So this is the uh, this is a brief working. If uh, you see uh, the diagram, which is uh, basically the construction part. Uh, a typical uh, SF6 circuit breaker, uh, it consists of uh, fixed and moving contacts enclosed in a chamber uh, which is uh, normally called the uh, interruption chamber uh, which uh, contain the SF6 gas. Well, this chamber uh, is uh, connected to SF6 gas reservoir when the contacts of breaker are locked opened. The valve mechanism uh, permits a high pressure SF6 gas uh, from the reservoir to flow towards the arc interruption chamber. Uh, now, as you can see, the contacts, uh, the fixed contact is a hollow cylindrical uh, current carrying contact. Uh, fitted with an arcon. Arcon just like a, uh, a structure like uh, you can say a small structure of uh, angular structure you can say um, just like the arcing horns in uh, transformer protection. 
while the moving contact is also a hollow cylinder with uh, rectangular holes in the sides to permit the SFX6 gas to let out through these holes after flowing uh, uh, along and across the arc. Well now the SF6 gas is costly uh, so it is recommended uh, reconditioned and reclaimed by suitable uh, auxiliaries uh, system after each operation of the breaker. Uh, the second uh, thing about that uh, some of the writers have suggested that uh, SF6 is uh, uh, not environment friendly. Uh, so this is also a factor uh, if we want to explain the working uh, so you can see in the closed position of the breaker the contact remains surrounding by the SF6 gas um, at a pressure about uh, 2.5 uh, to 2.8 kg per centimeter square so when the breaker operates the moving contact is pulled apart and an arc is struck between the contacts uh, the movement of the moving uh, contact is synchronized uh, with the opening of a valve which uh, permits sf6 gas at uh, 14 uh, kg per centimeter square pressure from the reservoir to the arc interruption chamber well uh, if the pressure is not high, uh, so uh, the SF6 uh, cannot perform well. So uh, the pressure is high intentionally, uh, so it can absorb the free electrons in the arc uh, to form a immobile uh, negative uh, ions which are ineffective as charged carrier. Uh, so in introduction of uh, SF6, uh, we have already uh, discussed that SF6 is an electronegative gas. So remember, uh, when it is electronegative, so uh, uh, it will happily uh, want to gain electrons. Uh, uh, so after the breaker operation, uh, the valve is closed by the action and a set of springs. Uh, so this uh, uh, SF6 uh, breaker, a uh, circuit breaker is uh, nowadays used widely uh, in the transmission systems and as well as in uh, different industries. Uh, their performance is uh, quite well as well as economical. Uh, there are some advantages uh, of SF6 circuit breaker. The first one we have due to the superior R quenching property SF6 uh, such circuit breaker have very uh, short arcing time because it's a, a chemical process and the gas uh, ionize the whole system completely. The second one we have the since the dielectric strength of SF6 gas is two to three times that of air such breakers can interrupt much larger terms. Uh, so as compared with the air circuit breaker uh, it is uh, two to three times uh, uh, stronger dielectric strength. Uh, the third one uh, we have the SF6 uh, circuit breakers gives noiseless operation uh, due to its closed gas circuit breaker and no exhaust to atmosphere unlike the air blast circuit breaker. Like air, in air blast circuit breaker we have a compressor it has a noise uh, we have a noise of arc quenching we have a noise of uh, uh, quick air so in SF6 there is uh, no uh, such thing is here uh, number four the closed uh, gas enclosure keeps the interior dry so that there is no much problem uh, well it is um, quite safe and uh, dry and no moisture uh, so when the moisture is not uh, uh, there half of the problems get solved uh, in five there is no risk of fire in such breakers because the SF6 gas is non inflammable this is the uh, property of the gas uh, well there are no carbon deposits so that the tracking and insulation problems are eliminated likewise in oil circuit breakers and uh, 
in air circuit breaker we have seen the problem of uh, carbonization uh, mostly in oil circuit breaker uh, so in uh, SF6 there is no uh, such problem uh, the last one is the SF6 breaker have low maintenance cost, light foundation requirements and minimum auxiliary requirements. Uh, low maintenance uh, because it is it has no uh, such moving parts like the air circuit breaker. Uh, so also the auxiliary it has no auxiliary like the uh, air circuit breaker have the compressor we don't have compressor uh, so it is quite easy and uh, economical to operate uh, according and as compared to the uh, air circuit breaker and uh, the oil circuit breaker well there is no such uh, uh, you can see the disadvantages the first one is uh, the cost factor the cost is very high as compared to the oil circuit breaker and uh, uh, air circuit breaker but uh, when the operation uh, when the smarter operation and the efficient operation is required uh, so SF6 is the best choice the second one we have uh, the SF6 gas has to be reconditioned after every operation of the breaker additional equipment is required for this purpose so uh, whenever uh, the circuit breaker operates and the gas gets ionized and uh, we have to uh, decondition it again to use it for uh, another uh, next time uh, so we can see that there is no uh, such uh, prominent disadvantages of the SF6 uh, circuit breaker uh, like in vacuum uh, circuit breakers uh, the vacuum is used as the R quenching medium since the vacuum offers the highest insulation strength as we all know it has a far superior, uh, superior R quenching properties than any other medium so if we discuss its uh, uh, basic uh, principle so as you can see from the uh, diagram also uh, the production uh, of an arc in a vacuum circuit breaker and its ex uh, extinction can be explained uh, so we we can uh, drop down into the two sectors first when the contacts of the breakers are opened and the second one when the contacts of the breaker are closed so when the break when the contacts of the breaker are open in vacuum an arc is produced between the contacts by the ionization of metal vapors uh, so the arc is quickly extinguished in no time because the metallic vapor uh, electrons and ion produced during the arc uh, rapidly uh, condense on the surface of the circuit breaker contacts and results in quick recovery of the dielectric strength so this is the basic principle uh, of the uh, VCB if you can see the construction uh, from the figure uh, which shows a part of a typical vacuum circuit breaker uh, it consists of a fixed contact uh, moving contacts and arc shield mounted inside a vacuum chamber well the movable uh, member is uh, connected to the control mechanism by uh, stainless steel bellows uh, this enables the permanent sealings of the vacuum chamber so as to eliminate the possibility of leak so a glass vessel or a ceramic vessel is used as the outer insulating body uh, so the R shield prevents the deterioration of the internal dielectric strength by preventing metallic vapors uh, falling on the inside surface uh, of the outer insulating cover as the working is concerned so when the breaker operates the moving contact separates from the fixed contact and an arc is stuck between the uh, contacts uh, as we discussed earlier uh, 
so the protection of arc is due to the ionization of metal ions and depends very much upon the material of contacts uh, well the arc is uh, quickly extinguished because the metallic vapors electrons and ion produced during arc are uh, diffused in a short time and seized by the uh, surface of moving and fixed members and shield uh, since vacuum has very fast rate of recovery of dielectric strength the arc extinction in vacuum occurs with a short uh, contact separation so this is the working of the uh, vacuum if we discuss some of the advantages of the vacuum circuit breakers like they are compact reliable and have longer life there are no fire hazards because uh, it operates in vacuum there is no generation of gas during after operation uh, so it is a comparison between the sf6 also uh, the fourth one we have they can interrupt any fault current because in vacuum the arc extinction is not the problem uh, fire they require the little maintenance and are required uh, required operation no sound at all uh, all the operation perform in vacuum uh, they can successfully withstand the lighting surges as we discussed in class that uh, the lighting surges uh, are of very high magnitude so to deal with that magnitude vacuum breakers uh, can help us they have low arc energy uh, they have low inertia and hence required a smaller power for control mechanism uh, like we see in the air circuit breaker uh, it requires a lot of power to operate itself and a continuous power because if the compressor uh, didn't produce uh, the air at the specific uh, pressure so it will not perform uh, well so these are the advantages and uh, in my opinion uh, the disadvantages as i concerned and uh, this is the only the factor we have of the cost the cost of vacuum circuit breakers is quite high so we have to be very economical while designing the system uh, but uh, when it is needed uh, an extra efficient or you can see a flawless operation is needed so we can use uh, vacuum circuit breakers uh, so that's all from our circuit breaker portion we have concluded and uh, we have discussed the four types of circuit breaker in details uh, thank you students